Hey guys, this is Joe Numbers from Lags Bike TV here to give you another quick tutorial on the current version of OBS and all of its new updates since my very last tutorial video. Now I thought I'd just go through, yeah, you know, look at all the uh, current updates that are for the program, how it benefits you, how it could help you out, and I thought I'd show them off to everybody so they get a good understanding of what has changed since well, since my last video since it's been months so here um obs the the current version i'm using if you full screen it 1080p on youtube i'm using version 0.52.04b this is toast build um this is their most current beta since this video has been put up on youtube uh if there are any other versions after that obviously it's past the date um i'll show you all the current objects that they have check us out one I think you guys might find really cool and interesting is something they have available in XSplit, which wasn't available in here yet, is enabling or disabling the view. Something simple like that, you know. Helps take away from a little bit of processing power when it comes to your graphics, uh, whatever you use. Okay. Uh, there's also other options here where you can full screen preview, which, of course, it's going to warp out the screen because I'm recording off the same screen. So, here, let's move on. Uh, newer settings that we can work with here. Uh, let's see, coding, broadcast settings are the same. Uh, you can ch select uh, the specific video adapter that you want rendering your, your recording or your broadcast. So if I got mine set specifically to my GTX 560 Ti, if I wanted to, I could switch it over to use my onboard graphics, which comes with my uh, i7 2600K processor. It's built into the chip. Or if you have onboard video that comes with your motherboard, you could do that as well. So you can take away from any processing power that is on your graphics chip. If you want to use it mainly for gaming, you can shift it over to your onboard. Now, one thing I've noticed about doing that is sometimes it will actually cause, um, this is personal for me, I don't know if this happens for you, but sometimes when I do this, it'll cause, if I use onboard video, it'll cause my uh, broadcast to actually start lagging pretty badly in some areas. It'll start dropping below 30 frames per second or it'll start frame skipping, stuff like that. I don't know why, but it does. Uh, I don't know if that's specific for me, but if it works for you, you can go ahead and try it. Um, yeah, I'll apply. Uh, these settings really haven't changed much. It's really much of the same. I changed my mic time offset just a little bit so it can match up with the camera. Uh, but that's just for me. If the settings work for you, whatever you want to do. Um, advanced, this is where it starts to get interesting. Um, whenever you hit preview stream now, it will encode to yourself with whatever settings that you're using. So basically, if you had this, the output setting set to 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second at medium preset, as soon as you hit preview before you start streaming, it'll start encoding like it's broadcasting, but it won't actually broadcast. So this will give you a good chance to actually pull up your task manager and see how it's you uh, performing on your computer basically all of your performance so it's a good way to be able to test your hardware before you go broadcasting to see what your computer's capable of and see if you can sustain good broadcasting quality along with playing a very heavy video game so that's one thing um, CFR CRF I've already talked about those uh, disable encoding while previewing that way you uh, if you wanted to turn that off that means whenever you go to preview if you're just looking to actually just preview your stuff rather than it draining your computer when you go to preview disable it using that setting right there pretty simple uh, quick sync now this is specific for Intel users with onboard graphics chips that are built into the processor this allows it to this allows OBS to encode using just that graphics chip uh, more. I'm sorry, 
it, it'll send most of its processing power more toward that graphics chip than toward your processor. Uh, I tried this out at one time and I noticed that I went from 30 to 35% usage on idle at 720p on medium all the way down to about 5 to 15% of processor usage on idle on 720p at medium. Now, that's a really a big change and a big deal, but at the same time, though, uh, they haven't perfected it. It's still in the middle of the toast build, and that means that when you go to try it out, basically the quality is the same as if you have the preset under advanced right here, if you have this set to super fast. It's basically the same equivalent quality, which is actually pretty bad. It's pretty bad quality. It can get... Uh, it will... Okay, let me let me take that back. It's not bad if you got a good bitrate. But if you don't have a good bitrate, it can cause your video to get really blocky if you full screen it on cast. Uh, but to each of their own. If you don't care, then go for it. But if you're kind of a per perfectionist like I am, kind of a little bit of OCD, then you would want the best quality that you can. And I would wait for them to perfect quick sync. To give you the best quality possible. All right. Um. Let's see what else? Desktop audio needs timestamps. Oh, uh, that's the same. That's the same. Okay. Uh, low latency mode. I think I explained it in the last video. Now here's where we get interesting. Microphone noise gate. Now, if you notice on this video, whenever I stop speaking, it totally shuts off the microphone. At least it's supposed to. Now. What microphone noise gate does, it's just basically the same as voice activation for TeamSpeak. Once my microphone goes above the open threshold, it'll trigger the microphone. And once it goes below the closed threshold on the left, it'll shut it off. That's how it's supposed to work. Um, reason why it's not working right now, I think, is because of the way I got the broadcast set up. But that's probably just me. It's I don't think it's the... Uh, the program right now. I think it's just me. But there's one thing, one last thing I forgot to explain here. Uh, under video, you got your base resolution and resolution downscale. If you wanted to downscale it to something else, they gave you more options. They basically made it every quarter percent that you go down, it'll give you an option for a new resolution. I know a lot of people would be complaining about this because they're looking for. Uh, their own option for their own resolution that they can put out. I think they're talking about doing this in the future, but for now he's got the downscale set up so it'll keep the aspect ratio while it goes down. And you won't lose any, well, any or much quality. But the way this is set up, I thought it was really easy. So if you do do a downscale to another resolution, say I got it on 1080 here and you wanted to do 720p casting, you can do that and then they have different filters here. What these filters do is it sharpens out the image so it looks its best when it's downscaled. Because when you downscale an image, it can cause uh, some jagged edges, and this basically smooths out the rough edges. And then 30 frames per second, that's kind of obvious, and that's really it. Uh, that's all I can think of. There could be some things here that I have missed. I am sorry about that, but... Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, if you find me really boring, if uh, if you enjoyed the video, I suggest that you follow, or I'm sorry, this isn't Twitch, subscribe, because I'm going to be doing more videos uh, towards tutorials or specifics. If you guys have any questions or something that you want me to check over, go ahead and drop me a comment under the video. I'll get to it whenever I can. Um, I'm really good at getting back to people when it comes to the comments, so yeah, feel free to drop something in the comments. I'll be to it as fast as I can. Um, oh, now the noise gate's working. So check us out. I'm talking, and then it totally shuts off. And then I'm back talking, and it shuts off. I like that because then it it makes it seem like you have more of a professional microphone even though I've just got a Logitech G35 microphone. So it totally shuts off. So if you have like background noise and stuff like that, it won't trigger your microphone 
all the time, like it being constantly on. That's what I like about Noisegate. So that's definitely something for you guys to check out. Um, go ahead and subscribe if you like the video. I'll be doing more tutorials in the future, and I will see you guys later.